ESPN's Heather Dinich dropped a terribly interesting story on Tuesday. She surveyed 62 coaches in the NCAA's football subdivision to find out which one of them thinks the current form of deciding which team has won the sport's national title is good or bad and what should happen next in the sixth year of the 12-year agreement to allow selection committees to decide which four of the 130 FBS programs should be given the privilege of competing for the national championship in a four-team playoff format. And let's be clear, the 10 conferences and ESPN could expand the playoff format anytime they want. ESPN doesn't own the playoff. They just own the rights to air it on television. Now, 65 coaches were asked to give their opinion in a survey with Dennis. Three of them, LSU's Ed Orgeron, Alabama's Nick Saban, and UCLA's Chip Kelly, declined to give an opinion in the ultimate diplomatic response, which is to say, hey, no, I don't want to do this. 51 coaches said they trusted the selection committee to get the four best teams right. That's a significant chunk. Only 35 said they still understood the criteria for how to get teams into the playoff, though. And 36 said they don't think that winning a conference championship should be a requirement for getting in. Texas head coach Tom Herman offered up Our conference, you can go 12-0 and your starting quarterback rolls his ankle in the conference title game and you stub your toe and you don't recover from it and you're not rewarded for anything. Being your conference championship game winner should factor in, but I don't think it should be a requirement, nor should the winner be an automatic bid in this form of a playoff system. It's easy to say when you've lost the last four titles to Oklahoma and won just one conference title since... 2009. Now, 38 of these head coaches thought there should be a uniform scheduling model across the FBS to force more difficult scheduling. Lincoln Riley told Dinich, I'd love to see us get to a point where every league, their conference championship game is one versus two. I think that's healthier for the sport. To me, if you're going to do divisions, everybody needs to do divisions. If you're not going to do divisions, everyone needs to do one versus two. That's what creates the best conference championship games and the most valuable resume the committee can evaluate on somewhat of an even playing field. Now that's Lincoln Riley also taking a shot at what the SEC has been able to do or not depending on able to do depending on how you want to look at it in the SEC East and SEC West. 30 of the 62 coaches thought that the playoffs should expand to eight or more and offered up, you know, some insight into how they feel about their opinions and why they think their opinions are such a big deal. Mike Gundy said, there should be eight in. If you win your conference, there's five of us, power five. You win that, you're in. The Central Floridas of the world, the Boises of the world, who are 12-0, and 0, or whoever the highest ranked team is in those conferences, they should be in. As it sits right now, There's not ever a school at that level that's going to get into the playoff. Not going to happen. You had Central Florida go 12-0 twice, and they didn't get in. So that proves it's not going to happen. If Central Florida were to get in, you can take them and you play them against the number four team. You don't put them against the number one team. Let's just say if they come in as the eight, they play the four. That way, it will be more exciting and competitive for the country to watch on television. Mike Gundy, actually a voice of reason here. Nebraska head coach Scott Frost coached one of those 12-0 Central Florida teams Gundy was talking about, and he added, any sport where a championship can be decided by a committee in a room, it's subjective and it is not the right sport for me. Gymnastics would frustrate the crap out of me. People love the Cinderella. They love Loyola of Chicago in the basketball tournament or Butler. That's also a very good point because I loved the idea of Appalachia State having a shot at the title till they lost to Georgia Southern, and now they will never get a shot at the title with a one loss in a Sun Belt Conference. Dabo Swinney offered he thinks that every game the Clemson Tigers play matters, saying, quote, everybody focuses on the playoff games and the national championship. The way that we have it right now, every game we have, especially once we were positioned, Every game was a playoff game. Every game. Duke was a playoff game. South Carolina was a playoff game. Pitt was a playoff game. We have layers of playoffs. The more you expand, the less the season matters, especially if a team so-called already in the playoff, well, 
Now you're going to have people not playing guys just like you have in all the other sports. All of a sudden, games don't matter because everybody is just playing for the playoff and they're in. What we have is the best of the best, excuse me, of both uh, what we have is the best of both worlds. It's late, I'm sorry. Now, we also need to add in there Dabo Sweeney also was scheduling teams like Charlotte and paying Wofford $360,000 to beat them up, and no one in their right mind would say that either one of those games qualifies as a playoff game, even for little old Clemson. Now, Michigan head coach Jim Harbaugh at least offered up a plan that feels fair. 15 games, 11 teams, starting with each Power 5 conference champion, determined within a 12-game regular season by a conference record and tiebreakers, similar to how the NFL chooses its division winners. He then suggests using the BCS system to rank teams 6 through 11 to determine the rest of the field. The number one seed would be the highest ranking BCS Power 5 champion. The number one and number two seeds get a bye. There's also room for a top ranked non Power 5 team like Notre Dame and a worthy Group of Five champion. On the first Saturday of December, instead of playing your conference championship games, the playoff would begin. He added, you'd still have the same bowl structure that you have now and teams that lost on December 1st, it's like they would have been in the championship game and then they play a bowl game. Now, there's a lot of reasons why this works, but he likes to add nobody would play more than 16 games or nobody would play 16 games. So would you exist with the same 15 that you'd have to win to or play to win a national championship in this current model? But it's worth adding here that 36 coaches thought their players could handle a 16-game schedule. And while coaches can't change the format, they do have influence with the commissioners plus Notre Dame's athletic director, Jack Swarbrick. But what about Notre Dame? Should an independent be included? This would go for BYU too. But pick coach Pat Narduzzi, who coaches in the ACC, said, why does Notre Dame get into the playoff if they didn't play in a championship game? They got one foot in the door in the ACC. How come they didn't have to go beat Clemson like we had to at a certain point? And it's a valid criticism because right now the ACC is Clemson, Wake Forest with one loss, and a bunch of other teams you don't really trust. While, you know, there's no consensus here, we do have good discussion, and I love good discussion, about what is the best way to move forward. And that's what we've done in this sport. But I believe the FBS could look no further than the FCS for how this sport should evolve, especially when you look at Appalachian State. As Ryan Nani at Banner Society pointed out, App State won three FCS titles, three straight FCS titles from 2005 to 2007, but those weren't perfect years in Boone. The 05 team lost two FBS games, lost to Furman, and ranked number five in the polls entering the playoff. And the 07 team, the one that beat Michigan, lost two FCS upsets, and again ranked five entering the playoffs. The 06 team only lost to NC State. For Appalachian State's purposes, those poll rankings didn't really matter. The 05 committee ranked Appalachian State at number two, and the 07 team ranked well enough to end up hosting three games. And even if App State had somehow ranked poorly, they could have relied on the Southern Conference Championship as an automatic bid. Of course, They still had to put in a lot of work after that to capture those titles. Four rounds with multiple single score victories for the 05 and 07 squads. But what about the 16 team playoff or 24 like the FCS? While most disagree with me about my wet dream of a 16 team playoff, there are benefits to a larger pool of teams getting into a tournament to play for a title like a bunch of games on campus, for instance, and more importantly, a fairer way to decide who the best team is in college football. After the break, I want to give you this discussion that I had with my buddy Jerry Ostrowski, who is a former All-American then at the University of Tulsa, the director of premium seating at the University of Tulsa, a sports animal radio host, alumnus, one of my best friends, and a 10-year NFL vet. He's got some thoughts and some good ones about what college football has done, what the rankings are, and where we're going to go from here through a month of really awesome football. Also, give my newsletter a subscription 
because if you subscribe between now and December 7th and you're already subscribed, you're already in this pool, you have an opportunity to win this OU lamp right here, right? And you don't have to be an OU fan. Uh, you can give it away to somebody that you know is or you control somebody with an OU lamp like your favorite Notre Dame fan or Texas fan or whomever. I'm just trying to give people more reasons to sign up for this thing because I'm writing in it, I'm putting a lot of effort into it, and I really enjoy this medium. All right, let's go talk to Jerry. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You got to help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> okay, so it is like 9 o'clock local time, and I have my buddy Jerry Ostrowski on the line. Because we got to talk about what we just watched. Jerry, how you doing, man? Doing good, RJ. What's up? Um, first, let me put you into the into the system there. I want to know how the hell Oklahoma State ends up at 23. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> but I want to know. I, I have no idea. I guess because I, here's the only thing I can think of. Kansas State beats OU. I was at the Kansas State Oklahoma State game. Oklahoma State embarrassed Kansas State at home. Right. And I guess they're looking at this Kansas State. All of a sudden, Kansas State, which was a, by most people, a bottom half of the Big 12 type team, now all of a sudden is giving Oklahoma State all kinds of credit for a great win so that they're, they're ranked. I mean, that's all I can think of, right? And they were like right there within striking distance of Kansas State because that's a lot of this is just, man. Like, if people are going to hold up Texas as a top 10 win for LSU, but not give Oklahoma the same credit for being a top 15 Texas team, and then just not remember that Texas beat Oklahoma State? Right. Like, wait, what? <laughs> like I said, I'm not mad. I just I don't understand. And non-conference was Tulsa, which obviously has two wins. I don't know what Oregon State has done. Which I don't, but I don't think it's been very good. Uh, well, or, Oregon there. State just put the screws to Arizona, but they ain't beat nobody oh, they else. Did? Yeah, they they dropped like fifty six okay. on them. And then you got, but then you got what? McNeese is their other non conference. Yeah, FCS McNeese. And their losses are their losses are Baylor, mm -hmm. Texas, mm -hmm. and 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 um, Kansas State or not Kansas, Kansas State, State? Excuse me, not uh, Kansas State. Uh, oh man, <laughs> I, not Iowa State. It'll come to me. Just give me a second. Tech. Thank you. Thank you. Because Jet Duffy went for 400. Right. <laughs> and the week. The it's week, 9 o'clock, man. It's late, dude. It, but, but still. But still. Like, <laughs> the fact that I got to think about it, it, it tells you a lot. And then. Exactly. Right. The, the, it's like, wait a second. What? Six and three? We're ranking three lost teams? Is that what we're doing? They ranked a three lost team, and they didn't rank them 25. It, well, and they ranked them. And they ranked them. <laughs> and they ranked him ahead of the team that was undefeated last week. Right. That was like SMU at 25. Like they got SMU at man. 25. But here's the other thing. They got, they got, they got, they got Memphis sitting at 21. And then the, the marquee team of the AAC, according to the rankings is Cincinnati. Right. And they got the 42 point loss to <laughs> Ohio state. Right. So I guess, so they get, they get props because a, I guess they, they haven't had a loss in the AAC yet. But I guess you go ahead and get drummed by 42 by the number one ranked team, then you get better, you get more cred than than Memphis and and SMU. I mean, yeah. I I just I get and here's the other thing though. Okay, let's if you start looking if you if, if you look at this committee and this is why you, and I'm I'm of course obviously talking about the AAC teams and the, the the power six as they say, right? The non power five teams. But here's the thing, if you're going to bump Clemson to five mm -hmm. because of their one point victory over North Carolina. And really that's probably what you're looking at. Right. Right. Then you'd have to say Memphis and SMU probably got both marks for not only having one loss, but then having to go to the last play of the game to beat Tulsa, both of them. Well, okay. So the argument that made the most sense was their eye test, which makes me want to gouge my gouge my eyes out, because I, I hate. Yeah, that. I hate that's I hate that term. Right, but it, but also it neglects the scoreboard. Right, it just it, it just says no right. no no that, that team looks right. better to us. Wait a second, they lost. It doesn't matter how they right. look, they lost. Like 
<laughs> it doesn't matter how big you are. If you get your ass whooped, you get your ass whooped. But right. uh, even so, right, I'm looking at it, I'm going, all right, Ohio State at one. I had them at one because they're the most complete team and they played an FBS opponent and will play an FBS opponent the entire year, right? And if you right. look at LSU, they got Northwestern State over there. You look at Bama, who the hell is New Mexico State to us? You know, right. um, Penn State could say that as well, except for, um, oh, I'm going to have to look it up. And then Clemson, they just paid $360,000 to Wofford so that they could beat them up. And they played Charlotte earlier in the year. And people want to give them credit for mm-hmm. beating up on an A&M team that ain't even ranked anymore, right? And then you get a South Carolina team that beat Georgia. And the thing that pissed me off about Georgia was, okay, the wins against Notre Dame and Florida mean more than the loss to South Carolina. Except Notre Dame just got destroyed by Michigan by what? Dude. 31? Can we have can they have their own ranking? Can they have their own can Ooh. they have their own can they have their own poll system, Notre Dame? So like they can be number one in their own poll every year and they can just go Them and BYU. Themselves. Them and BYU. Yes. No, yes. like let them let them do that. So like uh I've been writing the monologue tonight, right? And because it's a thing that I do every morning, you know this. But I'm looking at what Pat Narduzzi had to say about it. He's like, why, why the hell does Notre Dame get to participate? I mean, they're in an open marriage with the ACC, and they never have to play Clemson. Like, what, what, right. what, the, what, like, what does it to mean to be in the ACC if you never have to play Clemson? <laughs> well, I had the same conversation today about Florida State. You know, you're talking about how good of a job is that. Right. You know, people are talking about who do you really need to beat in the, in the, in the ACC. you got to beat Clemson. Right. You got to be one team. Notre Dame's not involved. I mean, but, they play in what once every five or six years. But it used to be you only had to be you had to beat Florida State, right? And before that, you had to right. beat Miami. But right. even when it was deep, like when it was deep, it was Miami and Florida State. That right. was it, right? And that's recent because Miami was in the Big East for so long, right? I just exactly. I, I yeah, I got I got issues with this whole thing. I but think, I got I got to bring this up real quick before I forget about. It. I got yeah, I got to yeah. talk a little bit about the alma mater and give them a little bit of love and the fact that. Yes, the year's not going the way it is, but let's let's look at the let's look at the first poll. They've played how many teams? They've 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 played four teams that are ranked in the initial top twenty-five, and had two of them beat and should have beat them. So just I mean that strength of schedule, I, I'd like to know where it ranks because their strength of schedule. Is, According to is, who though, is tough. right? And that's the thing. Like I think. Well, the- I don't know. Is there? Is that's what I'm asking you because so- I don't. You know me, man. I'm superficial on a lot of this stuff. You dig a lot what, deeper than I do. Okay, so like, they, is there a is there a group out there that does a strength and schedule there, ranking that they, you go to? There are several, and the first one that I would point you specifically to is Sagarin, uh, the Sagarin ratings. Yeah, but I would everybody who's worth a damn would tell you that TU strength and schedule is up there. I don't know that it competes with Georgia, not Georgia, A uh, and M South or South Carolina, right, right. as the toughest. But it, I would. It would not shock me to find out that TU has a top ten strength of schedule ranking. Basically, rankings. You can always see them in USA Today, right? Where, no, no, he has his own there, website. Does anybody ever read USA Today anymore? I mean, one guy in particular. <laughs> every every damn morning, every damn morning, and he'll he'll tell you about it too. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. <laughs> see, I just hey, look. So, I'm looking. I'm I'm looking at. Uh, I'm going to look up uh, the Sagarin ratings here in just a second. I might even end up putting them on the screen. I might not. I don't know. I don't want to make you promises. But I want to talk about this Penn State thing too because it's just – I find it fascinating because nobody wants to believe that Penn State is any good except they beat up on Michigan and Michigan State, right? And yet right. we don't want to give Minnesota the benefit of the doubt because they haven't played anybody except – Nebraska, Illinois, right? And you could say, so Penn State beats up on Idaho 79-7. to Then they beat up on Buffalo 45-13. to And then they start their schedule in, in earnest with Pittsburgh, right? Beat them 17-10. They Pittsburgh. Well, yes, they, they right, right. Pittsburgh. And then they drum Maryland. They beat Loxley like they sold something. Purdue's bad. Then ranked Iowa, ranked Michigan, and then uh, uh, Michigan State that was ranked. And now they got Minnesota this weekend. So, like, I'm looking at their schedule, and I'm going, okay, what is the difference between Minnesota and whatever it is you might believe about Penn State right now? And I got to tell you, I'll put Minnesota's strength of schedule up with its knock-on against almost anybody because 
they played South Dakota State, and FCS Jerry knows that South Dakota State ain't no easy win. And, uh, South Dakota State, they had to go to overtime to beat them. Right, but we would, we would agree that South Dakota State is a good football team. Yes, they are. Okay. Fresno State, good football team. It's a wild card. They're not. Are they? The, are they? The, are they the, Idaho? No. No, not, Utah. Not, yeah, no, no. Right. And Georgia Southern, who just knocked off previously unbeaten Appalachian State. Well, that that there's your argument right there. So I mean, you're probably trying. You're probably trying to figure out how one loss Appalachian State isn't in the top twenty-five. No, I get that. Right. <laughs> no, like, like I ride for the group of six teams mostly because they screw up the playoff. Right. Right. Because right, right. I you, do too. You know, I'm I I you know that I'm a proponent of a 16 team playoff, and I think you are as well. Am I getting as that right? Am I. I'm, okay. The more chaos, the better for me. I love chaos. Well, I mean, but also the idea that you're going to screw up the playoff by adding more teams is just asinine on a number of different levels. But Heather Dinich did a really cool thing where she surveyed 62 FBS coaches because she asked 65. And check this out: Nick Saban abstained. Chip Kelly abstained, and your man's Ed Orgeron abstained. None of them wanted to participate in the survey. The other 62 did. And we came up with some interesting statistics, and I'm going to go ahead and run through a few of them because, no, can college, football co- college football coaches cannot change the system. But let's not pretend that the 10 FBS conferences and their commissioners plus Notre Dame, however you want to see them, can go to ESPN anytime and say, hey, can we change the deal? Because ESPN does not run the college football playoff. They just – own the rights to televising it, which is way different, right? As a person who's very familiar with rights and media rights, it's like, hey, Jerry, uh, let, can we? Can I stream to you sports on the YouTube channel? If you pay enough money, sure. But I wouldn't be able to tell you who you're going to play. No. If you want to give me Sisters of the Poor, that's what you can do. So I, I wanted to outline that. But a couple of uh, facts here. 35... Head coaches said they understood the criteria for how to get into the playoff. 35 of 62. I think that's too low. I think everybody should know. And if you don't know, then it's too complicated, right? There were mm-hmm. only, there were 51 coaches that found it the committee trustworthy. Like they they trusted them to get it right. <laughs> Mike Leach was one of the folks that's like, nah, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, because remember they were they weren't. I don't even think they were in the top eight last year when this thing came out. Uh, following the conference championship games, and they were pissed, right? Or he was pissed. And then finally, I was amazed to find out that Mike Gundy was reasonable. I'm going to give you a whole quote here because I think this pertains to your TU point. He said, uh, there should be eight, right, in the playoff. If you win your conference, there's five of us, five of us, uh, then you're in. He's talking about the Power Five as opposed to the other five, the group of five. Then the Central Floridas of the world, the Boise world of the world, who are 12-0, and 0, or whoever the highest-ranked team, they should be in. As it sits right now, there's, not, there's never a school at that level that's going to get into your playoff. Not going to happen. Yeah, Central Florida go 12-0 and 0 twice, and they didn't get in. So that proves it's not going to happen. Shout-out to Mike Gundy, who is a Power Five football coach, who has an opportunity to compete for a championship that matters, the Big 12 championship matters, who's saying, nah, man, Tulsa, Central Florida, Boise State, you know, on the odd year that it's Appalachian State, they should be able to get in. But I would add this to you, and I want, to, I want to, I really want your perspective on this. Appalachian State won three straight national championships, 05, 06, and 07, right? Mm-hmm. They did not go undefeated in any one of those years, okay? They, mm-hmm. took, they took losses. They took losses to Furman. They took losses to uh, Power Five schools. You know to pay the rent. I right. just found it fascinating that that team. Most people would tell you those three teams were really, really good. The North Dakota States of their day, and yet yeah, I did this math just you know uh, today for the show. Only two teams have gone undefeated in the past two years and won national championships, and one of them doesn't really get to claim a national championship, right? So right. so it so it's difficult to go undefeated. So difficult that it doesn't matter what level you're at. It's going to be hard. So yeah. if you go undefeated, shouldn't you be at, at the very least be able to play for an NFL championship if not get one? Yeah, I think I think so. I think But see, this is why I I don't Do you think let me ask you this. 
this would probably be a better question. Okay. Other than if you go undefeated, do you deserve to play for a national championship? Do you believe that that all undefeated teams are better than one loss te- than than all one loss teams? No, I don't. But I think right. I think in the system for which we have right now, right, you have to right. give the zero more respect than the one. Well, if we do this, then you go back to what we what we used to do, right? With the, with the two team system. Get, yes. Okay. No, I don't. Isn't that what we get? Isn't that what we get into? We start then. Then not only are we we're not debating anything other than than undefeated, and we get into if we have three undefeateds, then that's the then that becomes the the fly in the ointment, so to speak, or the issue. Now we're trying to figure out who number two should be out of the three undefeated. Right, and I think you go the other way. I think because you know that you're only going to end up with at best at best four undefeated teams that's in the absolute best circumstances right by the end of a regular season by the time everybody plays the conference championship <coughs> that you should be able to make you should you should have a system that takes into account margin for error human error and say you know what we're going to give all of those teams top seeds and we're going to let them play their games on their home campuses and everybody else gets into the playoff or you're, you're making too much sense or you can do this, and this, makes is, sense. this is the other part that i find really cool do you know that if Grambling or Southern get into the playoff, they don't go play? Really? Did you know that? No, I didn't. Because, because the Bayou Classic is much more important than any damn playoff game. That's what it is at Grambling. That's what it is at Southern. So if you want to opt out, because you believe that playing in the Bayou Classic is more important than playing for a national championship, I think you should have that. You should have that, right? And if you go undefeated, right? Let's say Grambling goes undefeated or Southern goes undefeated and they don't play for a national championship. Let them claim whatever they want. But they also said, we're not going to play in this playoff because this other game is more important to us and we're not willing to move it. So I think if we could still have that sort of thinking in college football, because a lot of people would tell you college football is just a really cool sport and it shouldn't matter so much that people win national championships. That's cool. That's you. The rest of us care. You know, see, that's the same model I had as a kid growing up in high school. We we didn't have a state championship when I was a kid. Mm. When I was playing high school football, you won your your league. Okay, mm. we played our rival on Thanksgiving morning at ten thirty. Mm. One of the coolest atmospheres you can possibly imagine. Everybody comes home from college. Everybody's family's there. Stadium's packed, and you're kicking off at ten thirty on Thursday morning. Right on. I mean, just, just absolutely awesome. You get your day, your your game is done. You're home and you're getting ready to eat with your family before the the kickoff of the of the first NFL game. I mean, about as pure as it can get, right? Well, now all of a sudden, Pennsylvania decides they want to have a state championship and they want to do it by points. Okay, so they start having these point systems. Well, what happened? A lot of schools went, man, eh, we got points to play in the playoff, but really, we don't think we have a shot. We'd much rather play our Thanksgiving Day game. Hmm. And they would opt out of the state playoffs to play their Thanksgiving rival on Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving morning. Well, right. now now they've made it to where they don't even give schools a choice. And unfortunately, probably one of the greatest high school football traditions in the country, Thanksgiving morning football is now no longer because of rules in the state and, you know, money and everything right. else. And um, and you're right when you say and I'm proud of Grambling and Southern for what they do. That's awesome because to again, and it's something that I think that people get away from. It's tradition, man. It's tradition, and I think that even this playoff system, I don't know. Sometimes I know they put these teams in different bowls and stuff, but I still want to see. I still want to see the Pac-12 team play the Big Ten champ in the Rose Bowl. I really do. I really do. Well, that that's already out the window. Right. right. I know it's out the window, but oh. those are the things that I like. And you know what? Because that's out the window, let's go ahead and, and expand the thing to 16 because to me, really, a 14 playoff is not a true national champion. Hmm. It's not. Let me it's, not the- a, it's, it's, it's more like a, it's more like we have a beauty contest and the first four representatives from their states get together and then they have a battle off to see who wins. It. I mean, I, I don't I would rather have the 16. And I like your model. I think you 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 got pe- teams that have buys, certain teams that are higher rank get home games, giving it give your fans another home game. 
and those types of things. It kind of goes along the same model as the NFL because let's face facts. We're, every day we wake up, we're trying to get college football to be more and more like professional football. We might as well treat the playoffs the same way. Let me flip the tape, and then I want to tell you what Jim Harbaugh came up because I think this is this is interesting. All right, Jerry, I'm going to lay this on you, and then I'm going to let you go to bed. So Harbaugh came up with what he thought was a really interesting system, and there's a lot of things we could say about Harbaugh, but one of them is not that he doesn't beat to his own drum. So he said, check it. 15 games. 11 teams, starting with each Power 5 champion, determined within a 12-game regular season by conference records and tiebreakers, similar to how the NFL chooses its division winners. He then suggests using the BCS system to rank teams 6 through 11 to determine the rest of the field. The number one seed would be the highest-ranking BCS Power 5 champ. The number one, uh, number one number twos get a bye. There's also room for a top-ranked non-Power 5 team like Notre Dame and a worthy Group of 5 champion. On the first Saturday of December, instead of playing your conference championship games, the playoff begins. He added, you'd still have the same bowl structure that you have now, and teams that lost on December 1st, it's likely they would have been in a championship game, and then they play in a bowl game. Nobody would play 16 games, right? Everybody plays 15. And I think it's worth adding that 36 of the 62 coaches surveyed said they could handle a 16-game schedule, that it, it wouldn't bother them one bit, and they can make it work. So where do you come down on this? I, I like it. I mean, again, I'm going to go back to, to, to the most – what I still think to this day is the most pure form of football, which is high school football. And you look at the state of Oklahoma, we're asking our 2A schools, okay? We're asking our 2A schools – to have to play with scrimmages 15 games to win a state championship. It's a big bracket. You got it's a really big five, bracket. Yeah. five playoff games to win a state championship. Okay. So if we can ask our teams in high school that have 30 some kids to 40 some kids on their rosters to be able to play 15 games, we can ask a college kid to play 15 or 16 games. I don't have a problem with it. I think that again, again, it's just, it's, it's, it's the process. It's the way the thing's flowing. If we want, and, and see to me, then it takes all the, the BS out of it. If we want to, if we want to make college football more like pro football, then let's do it all the way through. Make the model the same, make it as good as you can. Kids are going to still leave in three years. Some are going to leave in two years and, and, and just, and, and let them go ahead and, 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 do the best they can, maybe have a chance to win a championship and then move on to the league if they're, if they're that good. I mean, I, I have no issues with it at all. I think personally it's, it's, it's a great model. I really, I, I like it. Meanwhile, we got Notre Dame claiming that a 10 game schedule is, is just fine. <laughs> well, why? Yeah, of course they do. Cause they got this, because they got this big ass pie and they don't share with anybody. No, I mean, that's hundred percent. And that's, that's, that's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. They can make their budget in ten games. Well, and that's it's it's more than that, right? It's it's also them taking advantage of a system that is built by 129 other teams, right? Or 128, I should say. But I think BYU would kick in. They would just have a problem when we start. You know, I mean, I don't mean this to be crude. I mean, but when you start selling alcohol at the games and whatnot, there's certain things that they don't believe. And there's right. going to have to be some some give and some take there for to get them in. But also, like I said, if you get 128 teams to agree and those other two teams want to do what they want to do, fine. Yeah. Right? I mean, let them be Central Florida and claim national championships they want to and we'll ridicule them for it. Um, one more question that I had for you. Do you think that there is a chance that we end up seeing one of these – American conference teams inside the top 10 by the end of this thing? Because, I mean, we talked about Cincy, we talked about uh, SMU, we talked about Memphis. I mean, I, I could just as easily see Nate. I mean, Navy can be there, you know? I just I, – Well, I, think I mean, RJ, conference. would would you not think that by seeing – I was – you know, the other thing besides Oklahoma State sitting there at 6-3 and three and being in, what, 23rd. Yep. The other thing which was surprising to me is Oklahoma sitting ninth. Which is right where they are in the AP poll. Uh, I understand, but I thought they'd be a little bit higher, maybe eighth, maybe even seventh. 
based Especially on, with Kansas with Kansas State being ranked, you know, in the top in the top twenty five of the BCS. So anyway, uh, the playoff system. Rather. But anyway, that that leads me to believe this. I think that that yes, I would not be shocked if a Cincinnati or a Memphis or somebody like Navy or SMU or somebody battled in because if you're going to keep Oklahoma nine, those other teams have a shot. Right. And when 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 and if Ohio State keeps winning and they went out, and I'll be honest with you, think about this weekend, RJ. Um, we're going to have four. We're going to have two of the four undefeated teams will not be undefeated anymore. Yep. After this weekend, and there's a good chance that that then we go ahead and and you'll be you'll lose another one when you have Ohio if if Penn State wins this weekend. Right. If you know Ohio State and Penn State game, which you know Penn State should have won that game last year. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was probably the most. That was probably the most poorly coached game of James Franklin's career, to be honest with you, because they had it. They should have won it, and he gave it away. But if you expect that game to go the way I think it'll go, I think Ohio State wins. I think Ohio State is is that much better. I think Penn State's a good team, but Ohio State's elite. Um, a lot of those undefeated things are going to take care of themselves. But if Ohio State keeps winning, then all of a sudden, and if Cincinnati keeps winning, that that whole thing keeps getting better. So. You know, I just think that I just think that yeah, I think it's setting up that way. I really do. I would add that Utah being in Oregon being ranked ahead of Oklahoma is somewhat difficult to swallow because Oregon's best win is a number twenty five Washington and its best loss is a two loss Auburn team. Utah's loss is to an unranked USC team, right? Yes. And the more that we look at Oklahoma the more Kansas State benefits from having beaten Oklahoma, but Oklahoma doesn't benefit from having lost to Kansas State, even as all Kansas State has done the last couple of weeks is ascended up the rankings as a two-loss team. So I just that's the part of it that I that I get pissed about. And you also got well, Georgia getting more credit for beating up on Notre Dame and, and uh, uh, Florida than for losing to South Carolina at home. I just I don't I don't me, understand that. But let me just ask you this: This is what I don't understand. This is what this is what's crazy to me. You would think by where Baylor was, you would think by where Oklahoma is, that they're maybe sliding the back the Big Twelve somehow, right? Yeah. But yet the team that lost three games is in the top twenty-five, right. and then you right. got Kansas State sitting there as well. Right. And everybody's living off of Texas, except except Oklahoma right. State, right? Because Texas right. beat Oklahoma State, and Texas got to be looking at Oklahoma State, going, "Yo, we think y'all gave our spot away to this team we beat." Right. Because <laughs> that's, I mean, they're they're basically in the same boat right now. You know what I mean? Like. They're in the right. same boat because everybody like tomorrow, if you, if you, for, you know, if you, for, if you do something crazy tomorrow and say, okay, we're opening them up, call in. What do you think? Right. Everybody's going to try to run that slight. You know, they're going to try to run that, that game that, you know, yeah. no respect for the big 12, what? no respect for the big 12, bro. Your team got three losses. They're in the cut. Well, so and mo- obviously and there's something there more than that. Right. Cause if you look at the three losses that Oklahoma state had and we went through them, right. It's tech. It's Baylor and it's uh, Texas, and then you go through Texas's losses and you see LSU and you see Oklahoma, yeah. right? Yeah. And you see TCU. I'm like, wait yeah. a second, two top ten teams that were undefeated at the time that they played Texas, yes. and and then Tech and 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 friggin' um, Texas itself. Texas, like, wait a second. So I I would expect people to to not not say that the Big Twelve is being slighted. I would expect them to say that Texas is being slighted. I would hear that. I would I would hear that because I agree. I, I agree know we're that trying Texas- to get out. I know you're trying to get out. Let me ask you this though. Okay. There's another thing you can look at, and this is something I don't understand. Maybe this is something too. Is is Oklahoma State ranked because of 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 Chuba? Yes, one hundred percent. I said that like I was doing the live stream instant reaction thing. And I said that. I said, congratulations, Chuba is the number 23 ranked team in the country. Because, I mean, you know that I made this graphic and I, and I did this bit about Chuba rushing for more yardage than, than Michigan, who's ranked at 14. And I was exactly. saying, rank Chuba at 14. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, the defense has been better on the back end than it has been in, in, the, in previous games. Mostly because Harvell Peel has decided to show up to play. But they've gotten worse, man. Like, they got worse. They lost. The be- one of the best wide receivers in the country, and you're still going to rank them 23 off of a win against who? Right. Iowa State, a game that they should have lost. So Iowa State at five and three is like, off oh, real, 
For for real? <laughs> I mean, so like I, I there's there's Kansas State was the least likely, I think, of those teams that we have mentioned that we would expect to be ranked this year. And exactly. we're actually kind of looking like we got off of them too early because we were on them early and then they lost to Oklahoma State and we go, oh God. And then Kansas State, it's like, no, nah, no, nah, it's cool. Watch this. <laughs> Watch right. this. And I, you know, if Texas beats Kansas State this weekend, then what? <laughs> like, seriously, like that's on the table. So like, then what? What are you going to say? Oh, and I, I would, and for Oklahoma, you know, the, the, the biggest indictment for them, so for me right now, is that Kansas State only put up 38 on Kansas. Put up 48 on Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, I, I'm shading them because you should have never lost that game, but I also want to recognize that Kansas State's a better football team than anybody thought because I thought they would finish 7-5 and five in Climate's first year and people told me I was crazy. Now it's looking more like they could finish, what, 8-4, and 9-3, and three, depending on how you feel about right. them getting in the Big 12 championship game? Right. You know, it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Jerry, um, this is fun. For those of you that don't know, Jerry is on the show with me on Friday, 10 a.m., every Friday. He gets in there at 9.30 sometimes, and we just jam. Um, most of it is just like this, and every once in a while we needle each other. Uh, we're probably going to have to talk about Masvidal calling out Canelo on Friday, Jerry. <laughs> so, okay, see? There we go. That, that's what I was looking for. By the way, dude, I'm already sick of The Rock. The whole thing was a stunt. It was it, obviously it was a publicity stunt. Did you you re, did you heard the, the he's doing the movie about Kerr? Yep. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'll tell you what. I'll bring that. And uh, I've been running these interviews with Crutchmer, so we'll we'll have lots of MMA to talk over the weekend. Cool. Um, Jerry Ostrowski, for those of you who don't know, TU All American, ten year NFL vet, and one becoming has become one of my closest friends. Thanks so much, Jerry. RJ, no problem, man. Appreciate you. All right, brother. Uh, get to bed, and I will, uh, you know, I'll tag you on the Twitters and whatnot and all this stuff. Perfect. All right, brother. Talk to you. Thanks, man. Bye.